He and his brother James were called sons of thunder. Don't y'all like that name? Sons of thunder. I like that. Son, that is a cool sounding name. Sons of thunder. I like that. But, you know, I start looking at that. I said, well, why in the world, Lord, would they call sons of thunder? Well, either Zebedee had a really bad temper, <laughs> but I believe they had some flaws. And we're going to learn some of these things. We're going to talk about some of these things today. And some of the flaws that we have, we could say, we're not quite as bad as we thought we were. <laughs> okay? All right, let's go back to the Word. All right. First of all, they were quick to protect Jesus. Mark 9, 38 through 40. Now John answered him saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works miracles in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. Hey, this group's not in our group. What do we want to do about it? And I believe that shows us right there that Jesus wasn't into groups, was he? He wasn't into groups. But what we've got nowadays is we've got so many different groups. This group against this group. This group against this group. And do you know that Jesus didn't start denominations? Man did because they couldn't get along. That's why in the Bible Belt you see five different denominations lined up right beside each other. <laughs> because one would get mad and they'd start another church. Then they'd get mad with that and they'd start another church. And there's so much division when we're all on Team Jesus. And if we can ever come to the point that we may not agree on everything. But if we can agree on Jesus and him crucified, we're on the same page, amen? And if we could come together in the body of Christ, you're talking about a revival that would shake this land for Jesus. That is what is going to take place when we come together as a body of Christ. When my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray in unity. We keep blaming everything on the devil and it's not the devil, it's all of us that can't even get along. We're on team Jesus. We're growing his kingdom. So we can see that they were not in to the groups. All right. Number two. Here we go. Y'all ready? All right. They had just a little bit of temper. Does that sound like any of y'all? Luke 9, 51 through 56. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not need to know the manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Don't y'all just love that? <laughs> just burn them. Let's just call down fire. They rejected you. Let's get rid of them. And Jesus had to say, come on now. We're not going to burn anybody today, boys. <laughs> I came to bring love and not fire. <laughs> so we can see that they had just a little bit of a temper. So that should give all of us hope that have a little temper. Do any of y'all have just a, a little temper going on? Can we get real so we can be healed here today? You can't have red hair and not have a little bit of a temper. Even if it's covered up with L'Oreal. But I'm not as bad as I used to. I could used to could tell people off in a professional or unprofessional kind of way and didn't think, think about it. 
And I said, if you talk that way to me, I would slap you one good time, but you better be glad I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire because I am a hold my tongue right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But sometimes the best form of spiritual warfare is to keep our mouths shut. And that is the hardest thing to do. When somebody is sitting there and you're thinking, how can you breathe and be so ignorant when you're talking to me like this? But what you need to do is to go somewhere in your mind. Think about a vacation somewhere. Don't think about what, you're do- what they're saying to you. You just think about something else right then and keep your mouth shut and let the Lord be the vindicator. Your job is to trust the Lord and do good and let him fight the battle. How many times does he try to fight the battle for us but we blow it with our mouth because we just gotta tell him off. So anyway, we need to let the Lord fight the battle for us and keep our mouth shut. See, if you ever understand it's that spirit within that person, it's not that person. It's the devil. So if you're going to get mad at somebody, just get mad at the devil. Because no, he's working overtime right now to destroy you, to destroy life. And guess what? If slow traffic bothers you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get behind every slow driver on 16th Avenue. If getting fast food is supposed to be fast and you just get all upset because you don't get your burger in two minutes... Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be in the last of the line every time. Doug and I go get groceries. I said, this looks like a short line, but it never fails. Price check on aisle 12, please. Or what aggravation is when they have to go and get a product. I'm like, why didn't you get something that had the tag on it to begin with? And you sit there 30 minutes with one person in front of you. It's going to happen every time. But if we ever can let the enemy know, you're not going to rattle me this time. You're not going to rattle me. This too shall pass. I'm going to laugh about it. It's going to be okay. I'm not going to lose my joy because I need all the strength I can get right now. And take authority over the enemy and let the Lord fight the battles for us. But that should give all of us some hope that you know what? If God can use them, he can use us also. Now, my last thing is my very favorite. Are y'all learning something new about these sons of thunder? Sons of thunder. I like that too. They had just a little bit of a competitive drive. John 21 through 7. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the disciple out ran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, went into the tomb and saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Don't y'all love that? John made a point. I beat Peter to the tomb. (laughs) I love the way he, you know, he may have been the disciple that Jesus loved, but he had a little problem with Peter, I think, at times. Might have been a little jealousy going on, too. I beat him, although he was probably a little younger than Peter. I don't know the difference in their ages. But he got there first, but who was the first one to go in? (laughs) He wasn't about to go in until good old Peter got there, and Peter was the one that went in because he knew he was a risk taker. And um, if you remember the story of when Jesus had, uh, after he had risen from the grave and he was cooking breakfast for the disciples, I'm sure y'all remember the story, and how John had noticed him. 
And uh, so he told Peter, and he was the first one to get out of the boat. Good old Peter, he swam to the shore. So he may have had a little competitive drive too that, hey, you may have beat me running, but I'm a better swimmer than you. <laughs> and one thing about it, he didn't have a problem getting out of the boat, and he didn't have a problem with getting wet. And we can learn a lot from Peter because some of y'all right now are in a comfortable little boat of life doing what you think you're supposed to be doing when God's told you exactly what you're supposed to be doing. But that comfort zone is going to become uncomfortable. And after a while, you'll say, okay, Lord, I'm going to get out of this boat or I'm going to walk on water or drown one. I'm going to do what you call me to do because you're going to be miserable because you're grieving the Holy Spirit when you're not doing what he told you to do. And friends, when you're in over your head, it don't matter how deep you go. <laughs> you just got to take the first step in faith and just keep on stepping. But Peter, he, was, he didn't have a problem with getting out of the boat. But you know, it's a good thing if you got a competitive drive to do something for Jesus, and that's to be the best Christian you can be. But the problem is when you're trying to compare yourself to somebody else. And there's a lot of jealousy in the body of Christ. Somebody comparing themselves to somebody else. This ministry jealous against this ministry. They think they got to have a new family life center because this one does. They don't have the money, but we got to look successful. We got to do this. Hey, you know what success is? Not that I've arrived, but success is doing what God has called you to do. Not comparing yourself to anybody else because God didn't call you to be them. He called you to be you. And you're called to please God and not man. And if everybody would get in the lane that they belong in and quit judging everybody else and talking about everybody else, just think about what we could do in the body of Christ. But there's too much competition in the body of Christ. We're fighting among each other and competitive against each other, competing against this church and this ministry. And that's not the way it should be. That's not the way it should be. One more thing. I thought that was the last one. I thought I'd forgotten something. My notes got out of whack here. But I remember. It's, they were a little selfish and had a pushy mama. I love this one too. Matthew 20, 20 through 22. Then the mother of Zebedee, sons, they did have a mama too, don't know what her name was, came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and other on the left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm, a, that I'm baptized with? Then they said to him, we are able. Any pushy mamas in the room? No, we're not pushy. But let's give her a break. Those sons may have put her up to this. Okay, Jesus, I want my boys to have the place to sit on each side of you in kingdom. Well, what happened? Then when the other disciples heard it, well, what about us? Who do y'all think y'all are being, having special privileges? What about us too? And that's when Jesus had to have a team meeting. But back to this pushy mama. <laughs> I got to get on one little soapbox. Not that I hadn't been on several soapbox today. But there are a lot of people, parents today, that are trying to live their life through their children. They may not have an athletic bone in their body, but you're wanting them to be a quarterback, you want them to be a pitcher, you're wanting them to do all this. I feel sorry for coaches. I feel sorry for referees. I, I heard somewhere the other day, you can't hardly find a referee anymore. They don't make very much money and they take so much abuse from the parents. These kids are developing ulcers at an early age because they're getting all this competitive drive trying to live through their parents. I can tell you our boys didn't have an athletic bone in their body, but you know what? They survived. 
and they're smart and they're making their own way and they're making a living and praise God for that every day. <laughs> and they don't have broken bones and they don't have hurt shoulders and they don't have fractures to deal with. That's what Doug would say, I'm, I, hate, I got all these football injuries. I said, he said, aren't you glad our boys didn't play? I said, yep, they got out of that at an early age. But Jesus had a team meeting and said, okay, this is not about uh, who sits by me in, in glory. And he gave them a lesson to say, okay, come on, team, Jesus. Come on. I'm Coach Jesus. I'm going to talk to you today. He said, there's some leaders that lord over you, that flaunt their positions and titles, but that's not you. You are called to be servants. And remember the story of how he wrapped the towel around him and he washed the disciples' feet before he was crucified? See, a servant is the one that washed the feet when they walked in the house because they wore sandals and their feet were dirty. And he says, what you've come to do is to serve, not to be served. And we're living in a time now that that would preach too. There's a lot of people flaunting their positions and their titles and don't know what servanthood is. There's a lot of manipulation and a lot of control, lording over people. But a good leader leads by example. And you may say, well, I'm not a preacher and all that. Well, you lead somebody. It may be your children, maybe it's people on your job, but you influence somebody. And a true leader leads by example. You don't tell your children that you don't drink and you don't party, but you're partying yourself. You don't preach that against sin, but you're living in sin. Well, y'all can get quiet all you want to. That's the truth. <laughs> y'all know it's the truth. But you lead by example. But see, a true leader leads people to Jesus and not them. And I can tell you, this ministry is to lead you to Jesus. It's not to lead you to me. I'm just a mouthpiece that he uses. But a good leader will lead you to Jesus. A good leader will see the talents and giftings and the anointing that's in you and try to pull it out of you instead of squashing it. To say, I see the anointing in you. I see your spiritual gift, and I free you to use them. Not that we're so in control that we have to have everything under control. But a good leader leads people to Jesus. So did y'all know that these, these the sons of thunder had so many flaws? Would you have ever thought a disciple that Jesus loved would have any flaws? I would think he would be next to perfect. <laughs> but he did. Still, Jesus loves him, and still, Jesus loves you. But you know one of the greatest miracles, I think, of this whole teaching is that the sons of thunder... And lightning bolt Peter is my name for him. I like that, don't y'all? <laughs> lightning bolt Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it, he was a spokesman on Pentecost. That temper, he would, we know he had a temper. He would cuss you out, cut your ear off, and ask for forgiveness the next breath. <laughs> so we know he had a temper. And the sons of thunder, they were the inner three, y'all. They were the ones that witnessed the miraculous. They were the ones that witnessed Jairus' daughter to be raised from the dead. They were on the Mount of Configuration with Jesus. Who went up the mountain with him? They were the inner three. They went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray even though they went to sleep. But God chose them with all their flaws to be the inner three. He had all the disciples, but he had the inner three. You can't hang with just everybody. You need people praying for you, but you need to be hanging with people that's going to encourage you and speak life into you and not speak death to you. So Jesus used them. So that should give us all hope. If he can use those three, he can use all of us. He's not looking for your ability. He's looking for your availability. Because many people are called, but few are chosen. 
But you got to be willing to pay the price to follow Jesus and do what he's called you to do. Regardless of how stupid people may think you are, regardless of how crazy you feel for doing it, Lord, am I hearing you? Is this sure? The only way you're going to find out is to get out of the boat and try. As long as you're sitting there in your comfort zone, you'll never know. And you don't want to get to the end of your life and say, you could have been used so much by God, but you let fear keep you in the boat. He's looking for available people. Still, Jesus loves you with all your flaws. And I hope by this message today that as I've, I've taught this, you've developed hope. Because you cannot have faith if you don't have hope. And no matter how bad your situation is, you have hope in Jesus. And if you're at the end of that rope, you hang on. <laughs> you have hope in Jesus. And when you have that hope, you can develop that faith. Because you are deciding that this day, I'm going to walk in victory. I've been depressed too long. I've been discouraged too long. I've been sick too long. I've been beat down too long. I'm going to take back what the enemy has stolen from me. I am the child that Jesus loves. Y'all say that with me. I am the child that Jesus loves. And you know what? I want to be more like my daddy. The more you're around Jesus, the more you act like Jesus. Can you imagine these disciples, all of these misfits, how God poured his, Jesus poured his life into them. They died martyrs' death. Even Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't want to be crucified like Jesus. John was, was boiled in oil, died at 94. But they all died a martyr's death. Why? Because they had been with Jesus. They had seen the miraculous. They saw him raised from the dead. They saw the miracles. They're not going to give life. For people that doubt the gospel, would you give your life for something you didn't see with your own eyes? Our God is alive. And you are his favorite child. Still, he loves you. And he's got great plans for you. Do y'all receive that here today? I want to take this opportunity to invite all of you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our shows are powerful, you wait till all denominations all races come together for one purpose, and that's to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and God of Gods. Now, for more information about our ministry, you can visit our website, sandrahancock.org, or call us at 1-800-579-7350. May God bless you. I would like to ask you to consider partnering with Sandra Hancock Ministries. We consider ourselves to be media missionaries, which means we spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world through television. We feel it's time for us to expand, and television's expensive, but so worth it, and we could use your help right now. Any donation would be appreciated, and you may give through our website, sandrahancock.org, or through the address on the screen. May God richly bless you. I pray this message blessed you. And do you feel just a little bit about, uh, better about yourself? If John had all these problems, the sons of thunder and, and lightning bolt Peter and how God used them, hey, he can use all of us. So we should all feel just a little bit better about ourselves because he's not looking for your ability, but he's looking for your availability. And he wants to use you for his glory. If you're watching this show and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to lead you to this, li this loving Jesus that I taught on today. And if the Holy Spirit is drawing you in, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me, and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life, and from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. 
Friends, if you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You're on the start to a victorious life. Just find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. If you're watching our show and you need special prayer, I understand that some of you are watching and you've got some physical illness in your body. Maybe you're facing depression, anxiety. You fill in the blank. We would love to pray with you and we have a 1-800 number. Just pick it up and call us and we'll call you right back. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you and we, we pray for you every day. And television is very expensive and we could use your help right now because the Lord is opening more doors, but it's so worth it because look, you're watching this show and you're being blessed also. And if you would consider that, the information's on the screen. Also, don't forget to order your CD of the month for an offering of any amount. Not only will you be blessed, but you can share the love of Jesus to some hurting friends. And we all have those hurting friends that we need to bless. Now, also, I would like to ask you to send us your praise reports. Let us know what God's doing in your life. It just makes our day to hear from you, to let us know that this show is blessing you. Also, connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. We put our events on there, and we'd love to connect with you. Now, next week, it's going to be a brand new show, a brand new message. Don't you dare miss it. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for watching our show, Voice of Hope. Friends, some of you may feel like you're at the end of your rope, but hang on. You have hope in Jesus. We still serve a supernatural, miracle-working God of now, and He loves you just the way you are. Also, I want to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. We would just love to have you as our guest. It would make our day. Now, for more information about the ministry or about our events, visit our website, sandrahancott.org. Last but not least, I want to thank all of our partners and friends who make this ministry possible, who help us spread the hope of Jesus to this hurting world. We love and appreciate you so much. May God bless you.